There are lots of books that deal with that are um, young readers. And um, some of these I got during the spring thinking about the content for this, not gulp, because I found this one for three bucks online. So I just couldn't resist it. But gulp is, is a book that follows, um, follows food as it travels down the elementary canal. And that's a very difficult type of concept and can be very boring. But she writes in a, she writes in a, in a way that reads very fast, if you're a fast reader. I sat down and read this in one evening. I enjoyed it. Um, she writes things like, this is gulp. And she's got a book called Stiff. The Curious Lives of Human Cadavers and Spook, Science Tackles the Afterlife. Here's one, but maybe not for certain grades. Bonk, The Curious Coupling of Sex and Science. And then Packing for Mars, The Curious Science of Life in the Void. So she keeps coming out with books, and I'm like, just keep on going because you'll help. You'll help us tremendously by writing these books. So I got it for three bucks. It was at a Goodwill store. It was on the Amazon. When you go on the used books, it was listed there, and it, and it said a Goodwill book, slightly used, whatever, and it was two ninety nine. I went, bye. My husband keeps looking at my credit card statement every month, going. What are you coming. doing? I had one come every day for like nine days. Who bear, I had to try to get them before. They all, they, it was amazing. They all came every day. They do. And my husband is always the one there at home because he works at the house. And so every day they deliver packages. And he's like, what are you buying? I'm like, trust me, it's not very it's expensive. For it's for work. <laughs> he's like, okay. And then this one is The Forest and Sea and Years Watching Nature. Some of you may be familiar with that. The Story of Earth, the first 4.5 billion years from stardust to living planet. And The Odyssey of KP2. An orphan seal and a marine biologist fight to save a species. Is that not cute? So those are, um, those are some of the newer ones. And those just came off a bookshelf at, at a bookstore late spring. Um, as far as the recycling and, um, uh, because the high school was recycling, waste stream, all that type of stuff, garbology, that was, uh, it's, right here. Here. It's, still here. it's right there. Mm -hmm. Garbology is a perfect book for that topic that you can introduce and it's probably on a ninth or 10th grade reading level and, um, it takes the kids, it takes the reader through, they added, MIT scientists actually added little trackers to trash so they could see where certain trash items went. And this, just, there's a couple of chapters in here about that project. And then they talk about the uh, Puente Hills in California in the Los Angeles area. Um, they thought they were going to close this landfill in 2008, but because of the newer technology, the landfill actually can run until like 2040. So, well, because of recycling too. It's taken a lot of the waste stream, so when they originally decided to run the dumps, they were factoring in everything. And then with recycling and repurposing becoming a lot more favorable favorable in people's eyes then they could um, they were reducing the waste stream going into the uh, garbage dump and they also it talks about their art program they have artists and residents who stay there for a year and they have their place on site and they build all their art from garbage so that's yeah so you could you could show the video and then you could do the book and there's there's a if, do you want to explain the video? Oh, the the oh, landfill the harmonic. Yeah, it's an amazing. There's a it's a video clip called. There's a, a group called the Landfill mm -hmm. Harmonic, and there's a group. It's in. Is it Paraguay or Peru? There's it's there's a. Not Peru. 
South American country. It's right? some South American, yeah. It's a South American country, and they're literally the, I mean, the housing, the people live in shacks on Brazil. a day. Is it Brazil? Yeah, um, I've seen that one. It's yeah, a on a dump. And what they end up the doing is they pick through. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and these people have picked through, and they built musical yeah. instruments out of the trash. And, and then they, they actually like play. Radio and City now. They're and now, yeah, they're, so they call them the landfill harmonic. It's oh. amazing. And I mean, and then the music that comes out of these things is incredible. And they're like, oh, this was used. This was the tuning piece was like a fork. And it's just incredible what they so come up with. Is this the guy from New York who is the artist? No, this there, wasn't. This guy was. This might be a different documentary. Yeah, this guy was a music. He's a music teacher, basically, yeah. and well, he was native, I think. Yeah, he's he went and he was teaching. training elsewhere. Oh. Yeah, and he was a teacher down there, and he they go into the dump and they get these materials and they build instruments. So it's like, and when you see them play, they're all the sound coming out of these instruments is as gorgeous as any other violin you would hear, and yet you look at what they're playing, and it is. This guy had a tuning uh, fork, and there was something that was used to make milky one or the other. Olive oil can. Olive oil can. I mean, it was yeah. crazy. One, yeah, then there was a big drum barrel to make the cello bass, I think it was. It was just incredible what they came up with. Yeah, L-A-N-D-F-I-L harmonic. And the YouTube video, it will be linked on the appropriate yeah. places when you get there. Thank you. Okay, and then... Um, for water, that's always been a difficult topic. Um, a lot of these are younger readers, but then there are some that could cross over. Plus, we have to remember that we have a lot of kids who are reading on a really, really, really low level by the time they finish high school. So it's, it's, it's disturbing when you have somebody graduating from high school with a sixth grade reading ability, but it happens. So um, one of these is One Well, The Story of Water on Earth. It's about um, building wells and um, how that helps people in various communities. Um, our World of Water, which is children and water around the world. So it's one of those around the world type books. Um, a Drop of Water, and then of course water, uh, water Cycle and Water Pollution books. And those are really, really simple. These are more like first grade type books, but those are a little more advanced. They're still fairly simple, but the good thing about using some of the more, some of the simpler books with the high school students is because they have really good illustrations, and most of these are award-winning trade books, so they've already been vetted for the content. A few of those have not been vetted. And then... Um, Anybody who's interested in global warming, I've got um, sort of a set right here. It's all global warming. Um, this one is, this is a cool one. Crash, Smash, and Mash, A Trip to the Junkyard Heaven. Oh, cool. And um, then there's another one that's, I don't know how many of you have seen those that blows things apart where you see all the pieces that make something up. Um, I believe I've got one in the closet, so I'll see if I can go and grab it in a second. Then there's one about the dumpster diver and recycle books. So this one's on this one's a recycling set. Now these books, I don't know how many of you have seen them. Material World is a global family portrait. This one shows all the contents people have in their house across the world. And it makes photos of inside the house and they have all the stuff outside the house. They move everything, yes. They move it all out and then they make a picture and then they move it all back in for them. And we, so that, that explains. We've got a lesson set that we're going to be doing with you during the, the PLT Green Schools on July 14 and 15, which is an ecological footprint exercise. And through our CTE energy education stuff, we have done links with that Material World book. It's a really good exercise in getting like that middle grade section and on up reading between the lines. Because the idea is I did an ecological footprint of myself and now you're telling me to do an ecological footprint of one of these people in the book, but it doesn't tell me if they have a this. Well, if all of my worldly goods are out on my front yard, do you see it? Right. Okay? 
Oh, I guess they don't. They probably don't have a car. They probably don't have motor transportation of some sort. Or they do. It's shown in the picture. So it's a reading between the lines kind of a piece. Also has some really, really good data. So if you're connecting kids in that sort of social studies kind of way and doing some data connections and extending that, it's particularly valuable in that middle grade when each of the subjects could take a hunk of that idea and then have a tie back to what it means to me. We've used that ecological footprint work through fourth grade, rising fourth graders or so, because it's numbers of 100 and more. And it can be looked at from the little people point of view of what do I have. You're just not going to be able to do the, the numbers calculation piece. So there's some really neat things of what is, what is my life like? What do I use? There's some really cool pieces, but you'll get more on that ecological. But when you talk about the numbers and stats and you're trying to introduce more data sets, this book is cool because it has various countries and it has the stats about the country. So the number of um, the literacy, the life expectancy, um, literacy rate, this is Iraq. Now, come to find out, you know, you just, it just falls open on Iraq, you know, with that being in the headlines. Um, life expectancy is 66 for females, 61 for males. Literacy, 49% females and 70% male and some of the families and then it, then it gives the stats on the families and um, percentage of the income spent on food. This is a family in Iraq, 90%. 90% spent on food. And there's um, a, just a one country Here's a family right here from Albania that they believe 100% of their family members will immigrate to another country. So they're totally expecting their entire family to move away. So really, really cool book. Um, somewhere in here is the toilet page, which is kind of cool because it shows toilets in different countries <laughs> and um, all the way to the holes in the ground. And uh, the kids really get into that. Oh, I do, I do have a few. I've got poetries and some of those. Okay. There aren't a whole lot, okay. but I've got a few. And then Hungry Planet is about what people eat. And it also has the pictures of people shopping, the little markets, and then shows what people eat, what the family would eat. And it, I believe it's weekly, right? Or no, month. it's a week's shopping. It's a week, yeah, one week food in July. And it tells how much they authors. spent. It's the so, same set of authors that did that. They also did um, women in the material world. So yeah. if you're on the high school level or doing sort of gender studies kind of work with students, that women in the, in the material world is a really cool one because it's, it's a how women relate to the world around them. And then just where you are types of things. Um, Map Satellite is a fabulous award-winning trade book that shows a geographical area like this is the city of Los Angeles and it tells you the satellite input. So it's 34 degrees north and 118 west and it shows the area and then, um, and then let's see, oh, a close-up. So you get close-ups of the buildings and everything. So that's really a cool one. Um, then you've got the series, which was Michael Collier of Over the Coasts, Over the Mountains, and Over the Rivers. So that's a nice geology type of set that um, I like to just sit there and look at them. There's one that's patterns, and I'll run back to the closet and grab that one because that that's a really good map link and it shows all it, it, it picks out geological um, it's geological 
anything you can find on a map or anything like that that's a circle, that's a square, that's various shapes, that's an undulating pattern, so it's called patterns. It's a great math link. And this is one that's our... They do. Let's see. They've got photographs like the Colorado. Yeah, but Let's see what they have. They, they might not. It's just pictures. But the map satellite would be something that you could possibly link to that would be more along what you're looking for. And then our changing planet, the view from space, this is a NASA book. So this is this is my copy. So if you if you want to borrow it, just let me know. And um, then human body. And I know that in certain grades you have to cover certain body systems. And that's always kind of tough and can be relatively dry. And a few years ago, DK wound up coming up with a bunch of human biology books. This is Dr. Frankenstein's human body book. And it's one that you don't need to be scared of there being just junky stuff in here because it's, it's, it's um, the really thick pages. But then it talks about it starts off with um, tissues and organs, and it has the it's typical DK fashion with um, all the information. And that's bone basics, and so it goes through your various systems. So it's very, very good visuals. And sometimes textbooks are not the best on the visual part. So a good book to have. They also came out with, oh, this one weighs 100 pounds. It's the complete human body, the definitive visual guide. And exactly. <laughs> we can talk about our musk. Oh, our head, neck, muscular system. So, and. and this one comes with a DVD, so you can use the various photos in here and take them and use them for other things. Um, the Great Brain Book is an, H, is an HP Newquist book, and then so I'd look at the inside of your head. Let's see. They t it's, it's got a lot of history, um, talks about controllers, connectors to various parts of the brain. So this is basically everything you need to know about the brain. There's also the DQ, or DQ, DK. <laughs> I'm thinking about ice cream. The human brain book. So that's another one. And then DK also did the human body book. So you have multiple types. Um, and these books are sort of forensic anthropology books. Faces from the past, which is forgotten people in North America. This is written in bone, buried lives of Jamestown and Colonial Maryland. They made those discoveries a few years ago. Bone Detective, it's about dying friends. The human story or evolution from prehistoric ancestors to today. Beethoven's hair, which is a really good one because that talks about um, how you can take hair samples and test those to figure out what might have killed someone from the past. Where we didn't have the um, science in the past to actually do that, we just buried someone. We can take hair samples now and, and test those. So they came up with why Beethoven died. What did they come up with? What did they say? Was, you know? I think it was poisoning. Really? Mm -hmm. Accidental or someone didn't like it either? 
It was all, it was lead. And so they were thinking it was from his drinking vessels. Because they used, they, they lined a lot of things with lead back then. And so people died from lead poisoning. And they didn't know why they were going crazy. They didn't know why they were losing their head. And then they would up and die. And so they would just bury him, and so they they came up with that. So that's a really good book. Um, let's see. Cave Sleuths is one about um, the people who uh, go into caves, the ones deep underground and everything. I don't know if any of you have seen the, um, there's a, I think it's a Discovery Channel uh Piece is on the people who are going into, there's a cave, I want to say in Central America, it might be Mexico, and it's a hundred and, I want to say it's like 130 degrees or so inside that cave, so they actually have to go in for very limited times, it's got the, yeah, it's a crystal cave, and it's got those really huge crystals, and they're walking around the crystals, and they're they're shimming their way around them, and these crystals are so big they make men look like they're about that big. And it's just amazing. Do they wear, like, special they wear special suits, suits that are like air conditioned. Because when you think about, like, when they talk about Ebola, they think they've been in a cave. Like, you think about like, right. beyond the crystals. They look and so, so they, they wear the special suits. It shows them suiting up and all the safety precautions and everything. So it's, it's a really, really cool video. I've seen that at least twice on television. This one is Cave Sleuths, but that kind of, that, that video goes along. And then we've got one, Lucy Long Ago, about the Lucy discovery. And Little People of the Lost, Little People and the, and the Lost World, an anthropological mystery. And I don't know who any of you followed, but this, this was in, off of Indonesia, where they found those really tiny humanoid skeletons in 2003. This is about that discovery, and the little humanoid um, skeletons that they found, they thought it was a different species, but it's actually a, a very, very small human. And so, they, they, and then some things I've seen since have linked the little people of Indonesia with some of the um, characters that are supposedly little people in Hawaii. So there, there's a lot more of the links going on now. And um, this one goes with the human body stuff, again, is the guts. It's um, Seymour Simon sometimes launches into human body systems, so you can find singular titles like that. This is, um, this is my sort of super bug um, virus set right here. Super bug strike back, deadly invaders, Virus outbreaks around the world from Marburg fever to avian flu. The American Plague, the true and terrifying story of the yellow fever epidemic of 1793. That book reads so fast because it's so good. And Code Orange, one of my absolute favorites. Code Orange is a Caroline Clooney book. It's, um, she actually wrote The Face in the Milk Carton and, um, this book, there's a kid who lives in he lives in New York City. He comes to Connecticut to their house for the summer. Um, so it's it's a it's cool as far as location goes. But the kid goes into the attic, finds an old book, finds an old um, envelope in the book, opens it up, sneezes, and these particles flap into his face. And he describes it being scab looking stuff in the envelope when he sneezed. And so then the FBI gets involved, the police get involved, the whole nine yards. So it's a good mystery type of book. So you can do kind of a compare contrast type of thing with fiction versus nonfiction. So you could even do fiction versus nonfiction. The Deadly Invaders would work. And then I have a set that's about um, sort of people who, um, 
more about um, saving wildlife, preserving, uh, like this was Champions of Wilderness, these are Earth, an Earth Heroes book. Um, these, are, these are all environmental champions, um, like Thoreau, Mir, um, Roosevelt, Leopold. So you get the stories of all of them. The Boy Who Drew Birds was the story of Audubon. And then Jean Craighead George wrote about in the introduction of the wolves and the buffalo in the, uh, in the plains. So, and, and how the numbers diminished, why they reintroduced the species, all that stuff. So, the cool thing about this is that just recently, not the buffalo, but the wolves, just recently they, they've opened up hunting for the wolves because they've overpopulated after they were reintroduced. So you've got a book and then you have uh, primary sources out there on the internet that you can actually find to go along with it. So you can actually have them com have the students compare the, what's written here versus what um, is written online in the uh, various newspapers. And the, the whole idea with population control and you could even bring in some things about the, um, the deer in the Northeast and how they've overpopulated because they're not hunted. Um, and on state land, they really push for more hunting to occur. Um, so it's kind of cool. Um, but I'll, I'll leave these out here so you can come and grab books.